Welcome to the Chris and Sam podcast. Pull up a bar stool and join us for a random conversation, guaranteed to make you think or your money back. Hey there, Sam. How you doing? Hey, Chris. I'm doing well. I got to tell you, I've, I've got to get this started like straight away. Like we were talking about something earlier. I'm like, hold that thought. We'll cover this in the podcast. Sam. Tell us about the excitement that is the Brighton Pier in Christchurch. <laughs> I did forget to mention this last podcast. Uh, on my trip, my tour advisor, that's what I'll say, uh, was saying, let's go to the Brighton Pier. They've got a carnival thing going on. It's been advertised everywhere. Let's go check it out. And, mm-hmm. I, and I was like, oh, that's pretty- I, I know my mum used to always go on about the Blackpool lights and all that. And yeah, yeah, pier yeah. Thing, so I was like, oh, so, yeah. so we weren't sure what this was going to entail and uh, if anything was going to be on the pier. So we turn up and there's nothing happening on the pier itself. And down the front is a whole bunch of about five crazy looking carny folk. And uh, they've got a dilapidated looking uh, Ferris wheel that looks like something no one should ever go on. They have some sort of uh, scare thrill house, horror house thing which may or may not be how they uh, steal children, I'm not sure. And uh, then there's a big blow-up double slide that looks like it's been faded for the last 20 years, has Burger King signage peeling off it, and the carny that's running it is asleep in the middle. So <laughs> if you want to go on that, you have to wake him up, shake him awake, and uh, yeah, it was, it, it was, what can I say, quite disappointing. Yeah, was, yeah, I, that's that's awesome. So after that, what we actually did was we went and found some of the giraffes. Uh, so what they've got is standing tall Christchurch, and they have a hundred giraffes. Oh right, right, and, right, and right. a whole bunch of groups got to they decorate had them. Cows in Auckland, for a while very, back. very similar. Yeah, yeah. But there's an app that you can get, and it shows you the location on a map. And when you go near it, it lights up and it says you've got that one. Yeah. All oh, right. So it's an interactive game, basically. Sort of. Yeah. yeah so yeah. we wandered around and found a couple of them, and there was one in the library. And for the life of me, I can't find the two at Christchurch Airport. Couldn't work out if they're inside, outside. The map seemed to always keep moving. Very strange. Right. Maybe, that was maybe cool. the giraffes were migrating. Maybe across the airport. Yeah. I mean, you, and you they, just missed them. They're always they're always galloping away for the winter. Yeah. Do they gallop? It's more of a rocking horse motion. Have you ever seen giraffes? Run? Yes, I was just going to say, I've seen them run at Hamilton uh, Zoo. It's very, very funny. Actually, one of the most disappointing times I've been there was uh, it was raining and they put a sign up and says, the giraffes won't be up today, it's too wet. And I asked them and they said, oh, it's too slippery, they might fall over. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. they lock them up. I, I've seen giraffes running in the wild in Africa. It's pretty cool. It's yeah, like yeah. You're driving along and there's like a giraffe and it looks at you and then it starts rocking back and forth away from you and it... They move quite quickly, but it looks like they're doing it in slow motion. It's yeah, really, yeah, 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 yeah. It's really it's cool. crazy, yes. Really cool. Okay. Well, I got something I wanted to talk about. Um, it's, it's just a little thing, but it, it just struck me. And I want to get your opinion on this. Excellent. So there was a story on uh, news.com.au, Amer- Australian, obviously. And um, it's like the story was written by a New Zealand-born Australian. She would call herself an Australian chief. Of course she right? would. Yeah. Yep. But uh, top 10 things New Zealand does better than Australia. Obviously, uh, uh, a sort of thing that over there, they're a bit controversial for them. Yep. But they got things like, one, they don't have attention deficit disorder when it comes to prime ministers because we keep ours for a long period of time. Yeah, like yeah. They like, they Helen like, Clark for nine years yeah. and John Key's basically for nine years. Yeah, they like swapping and, them out. Yeah. And they believe in firm consequences, which I thought was quite good. When All Black Aaron Cruden missed a flight to Argentina following a drinking session, he was dropped from three tests and told to say it, stay home. And then when uh, on returning to it, he was still benched because the guy that had been replaced him was doing so well. Yeah, yeah. You know, which is cool, you know, compared yep, to the yep. – and they compare it to the shenanigans of Australian people that I have not heard of. Excellent. Um and when they po- boast homemade, they mean it, and da 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 da. So there's a whole bunch of stuff there, and it's it's cool. It's quite feel good. But the thing that got me yep. was me this with one it. here, number five: women play sport. And I'm like, huh? And then it says, of course they play it here too, but you'd never know it from watching the television. In New Zealand, netball is not only broadcast live, but it stars along with golfer Lydia Ko and shot putter Valerie Adams, and they also appear in the glossies. It stars, so the stars, you know, Lydia Ko, Netball Stars, yep. Valerie Adams appear in Glossy Magazine. So I'm like, well, not that I read Glossy Magazine. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. like, that's normal, isn't it? Here, you only make a mag if you've had a juicy marriage breakup, a drug scandal, or a dodgy text message exchange. And I'm thinking, is that normal? 
because I just assumed that there's a lot of women in sport that would be televised. Like you'd get Lydia Ko on the news every night. She pretty much plays well in a international yeah, yeah. tournament, and you know Valerie Adams is you know really a, a star in terms of media. People love interviewing her, and she's really fun to 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 see in an interview. And I'm like, really overseas they don't they don't like push these women sports people out there. Uh, it might come down to marketing money, and I don't know. But in saying that. Talk to a lot of the very successful New Zealand women's sports teams that never get a mention. I I do. I the New do Zealand realize. women's cricket team, the New Zealand women's softball team. Uh, I think the uh, sevens team. They I mean they they're the champions. Yeah, uh, I know the know. Black Ferns have done well with rugby, and I know I know the soft, but but I used to coach women's softball, so I suppose that's why I know. Um, New Zealand cricket team. I I don't care about the New Zealand men's cricket team, so I wouldn't care about the women's <laughs> cricket team. At least you're consistent. I, I'm, there. I'm not a cricket person. That no, time. no, but but yeah, yeah, I I know what you're saying. So yeah, it, it's interesting. And then that coupled but, with recently, but they will be showing things that their target audience probably want to see. Yeah. So if the target audience is mainly male. Is that a good? Is it just generalisation, or is that? Well, no. I mean, you know, you you might be saying in Australia the um, target audience is um, macho Aussies that really don't give a shit about women. Yeah, true. Yeah. So that could be it. I don't know. Uh, but I I thought that was interesting in a segue sort of way to the FIFA goal of the year. So you, did you see that on the news? No, no, I didn't. Okay, so um, there were three people. Uh, picked as finalists, which was done by international vote. Oh, okay, right? cool. Yep. For goal of the year. And there was um, the finalists were a Colombian named uh, James Rodriguez, uh, an Irish girl called Stephanie Roche, woman, right? And a guy, oh, I forget where the third one was from. He was French or something. I think European. It might be Portugal or something like that. So anyway, they... Um, they had these goals, and they were spectacular. But the, the amazing one, really, for me, was Stephanie. So she's in Ireland, and it's just a club game. These yeah, other yeah. ones are like huge games with 50,000 people. Her one is a club game, a women's club yeah. game. There's like 12 people in the stand. Excellent. <laughs> I don't know, but, you know, there's like bugger all people in the stand. And somebody caught this on, on their mobile camera. Yeah. And the ball gets high past to her from out the back and wherever and she hits it up with a right foot yep bounces it again with a left swings around so it hasn't touched the ground yet and boots it like in midair volleyed it into the goal excellent and it is just phenomenal i'll show you the video we'll link to it yeah, in the yeah show we'll notes have it up in the show notes and on the facebook page and all so over the place. um but this was picked by um vote and she didn't win um james rodriguez won from yep. columbia he got 1.5 million votes. She got 1.3 million Whoa, votes. Pretty close. And the third guy, who I've forgotten the name of already, he's not important. 300,000 votes. Yeah. Right. So she did get a lot of votes. Now, I, I think some of that will be the Colombians will all vote for the Colombian. And Definitely. there's a lot of people in Colombia, right? Yep. And then maybe, maybe all the Americans that want to have cocaine um, have to vote for, <laughs> for Colombia to get a discount. I don't know. But, um, <laughs> discount. <laughs> discount your cake. Um, but you know, so, but I wonder how much of it is this whole sexist thing? Cause that, I, I just, I still don't get that. I mean, you know, the, the whole sexist thing. No, sport. no, it's, it's a bit crazy yeah. trying to get the equality there. Yeah. I don't know. I, I've the board. coached, uh, women's, uh, full contact tournaments and I've coached, um, oh, team rather. And I've coached, um, when you I say full contact, you mean karate, eh? Karate. Yep. Yeah. Karate and women's softball. So, um, yeah, I don't know, and and the, there's a lot to learn from the girls as well, uh, both in the way they 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 train and you know, yeah, all, all all sorts of things there. So anyway, it was interesting to me. Ah, very good. So, oh, have we got rant time. I've I've got to do this. Yeah. Rant time. Da, 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 da. Rant time. Da, 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 da. Rant time. I, I got to give a shout out to the fighter and the kid because that's what they do all the time. But I just had to. I uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks that's the best thing in the world. Oh, I want to do that every week. I can so see why Brad does we, it. We'll see. Brian does it. I said Brad. Whatever. Okay, so we have a Kickstarter. Thing. Yeah, it's a Kickstarter that didn't make it. Uh, it's a Kiwi one, and I. Oh, so it is over. I didn't realize that. Yeah, no, it finished on January the third. Um, it had twenty-one backers. 
Uh, they gave one thousand one hundred fifty-six dollars out of thirty-five thousand dollar goal, and uh, my personal opinion is oh, I can't see the appeal of this at all. Uh, it's called the CanTab Seal. Uh, it's groundbreaking technology. Finally, we can now reseal a beverage can just like its cousin, the bottle. Get on board now. And uh, we checked it out and we looked at the video. And uh, oh man, I, I and I have to say this. I have to say this because I do video stuff, right? Yeah. If you want a masterclass in how not to do a video, watch this. Check one. this video out. Oh my god, eighties music filmed with a video camera in portrait, not in landscape. Um, the Quite stupidest. Um, yeah. Oh no, dude, that was the. So it's a rubber video. stopper um, that you put in the top of your can to save your drink. Uh, I'll read the little bit of a blurb here. Actually, I can't even. Who's the bit? Oh, I'm thinking of the story. He was in stuff. That's what I was thinking about. Uh, he was sick of his kids having half drunk uh, cans of Coke or whatever, and now the beverage can be resealed just like it's a bottle. Uh, it's relative to the bottle. Uh, several prototypes have been created, and planning and market validation has enabled us to move to this stage and now come comes with the rollout. Um, if you didn't know what it was, and I just showed you a picture of it, you probably might come up with an interesting answer. Um, <laughs> and by interesting, he was talking <coughs> sex toys, ladies and gentlemen. Sex yeah, toys. I may have mentioned that. Uh. So, like, from $1... Up to like eleven dollars, you don't even get one of these things. You just get a bumper sticker. I oh, they didn't even spell bumper properly. It says bumper. <laughs> you can get a can tab sticker for the car window or the bumper. Oh, bumper. Um, <laughs> so for twenty dollars, the first people that get uh, pledge it, uh, the first ten get a pack of three. And actually, nineteen people paid for that. Yeah. So, so the first ten get a pack of three. The, the rest, three, of the you, others get one. The rest, yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, and, and for five hundred dollars, this is the best one. Oh, and one person backed it at five hundred dollars. I just read that. It'd be his mum. Yeah, you can get five complimentary CanTab seals once the production is completed, and uh, early bird pledges the first five receive three sets. That's cool. But for five hundred dollars, I can just go buy cans of drink and waste them willy nilly. Uh, I I just got... this is wrong on so many levels. First of all, is there a real need for uh, stopping a can? Like you, you. Well, the, the, if it was a beer can and no. you didn't finish it, you'd be like ostracized for your mates by your mates. Yeah, that's true. And and the the argument, or well, the idea is because the kids were, um, you know, leaving these drinks undrunk. Well, either split the one can between the two kids if you got two kids, or you finish the can yourself, or you just don't worry about it because it's a freaking can of drink. Who cares? And it and it's coke anyways. No it's offense, a but it's not good for you, really. So why would you save it and poison them longer over a longer period exactly. of time? Exactly. I don't know how you're supposed to keep track of these little rubber plugs. I Especially don't know where you're supposed worth, to... Especially if they're worth three for 500. Especially if they're worth $125 a pop. <laughs> well, you know, if they get up there in price. Um, uh, and, and in the video, the one thing this person doesn't do is tip the can upside down. Yeah, yeah. Like we're waiting for him to tip it upside down. No, he just rolls it along on a table. He, he rolls it on the table. He always makes it's... sure that the tab end is on the up high side. He doesn't roll it on the table so this tab is no, so at any point. Which I'm is not hilarious. very confident in it. So check out the video. I If it comes back up on Kickstarter, I'm going to put it up on Kickstarter Dropkick. Uh, I'm going to put it up against something else. And talking about Kickstarter Dropkick, uh, we've still got some Urge coffee vouchers Yay, Urge. to give out. Big thank you to Urge. You're amazing. So, to uh, go in the draw to win them this podcast episode, actually, we didn't put in a uh, we didn't put in a time to do it by for the last episode. Oh, if if you haven't done it for the last episode, it's too late now. <laughs> okay, well that's right then. <laughs> but uh, find us a Kickstart campaign that would go in the dropkick category, and you go in the draw to win. Actually, actually, either campaign. If you see a campaign that you think is definitely a dropkick, or a, or a one you quite like an to epic see, one, yeah, an epic one that you'd like to see go ahead, put it in there and say why, why, why I think it's a dropkick or why, um, and we and we can use it. In the most show. most of the dropkick ones sort are of pretty just, obvious. Yeah, pretty obvious. <laughs> stand stand out by themselves. Yeah, so you can enter that competition by going to the Chris and Sam Podcast dot com uh, on this episode, episode what are we nineteen? Nineteen sounds yes, good. Nineteen, um, and uh, just put a comment there, or leave a comment on the Facebook page, or reply on a Twitter 
Twitter message. That'd yep. be great. To the Chris and Sam pod. Yeah. Yeah. So if you can do that and we'll put you in a drawer, put those names in a hat, pull one out and somebody gets some lovely, lovely coffee. That'd be good. From Urge in Victoria Street in Hamilton. Thanks to Sissy and Jeffrey. Yes. Oh, there's a couple of comments. There's a couple of comments on what? They kind of, a, we haven't even published this. They haven't done a comment yet. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, um, this is comments on the can tab <laughs> and someone's uh, asking about the pledge options and saying that, you know, you only have 100 pledge options for the actual can tab, which does not add up to enough to get you to the funds you need. So mathematics isn't their strong point. Um, yeah. Thank God they did that market validation, though. And someone just said, no probs. Can you explain the maths behind the $500 pledge? It's $20 for one seal or $500 for five. Just does not make much sense. Uh, and obviously, the, 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 the creator is saying, the system won't allow me to change the reward details due to a pledge already. But you are correct. It's not balanced. So hopefully this will allow potential... What? So hopefully this will allow potential invested parties. Full stop. For pledges of $500 above, we'll get five seals, five key rings, and five window or bumper stickers. Very bizarre. I'll link to it in the show notes. Uh, that, you can oh check out the God. bad video, and oh, we'll see if it comes back. That is painful. And that was rant time. Da, 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 yeah. Rant time. Chris's favourite segment. Okay. So, yeah, no, that, that was funny, though. But you ha well, not the rant time, but that, that, that kickstarter. You have to check that out. Seriously, it is the stupidest thing i've ever seen and i see some stupid things you know like you see so much marketing stuff going wrong and you just face slap face, face slap. slap anyway okay face palm face palm is what i mean yeah yep. face palm thing. people knew what i mean yeah people knew what i meant okay so that's all i had on my little notes of things to really talk about in this podcast what else has been going on recently i don't know but it's getting very warm in the podcasting studio right now Holy have you noticed Yes, it is. It is. Like um, we're, you know, air conditioning and we're state of the art, really. Um, I'll open a window. Yeah. Sweet. Or your garage door. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. There's a slider door there. That's oh, a, okay. Yeah. But yeah, so um, I'll do. Do you want me to do that right now? No, no, we're good. Like, you know, we've got to keep the podcast rolling and. Yeah, the show must go yeah, on. Yeah, the show must go on, and I will suffer in the heat just for our listeners. Oh, yeah. So you, um, movies. Any movies you've been. No. To see? no, 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 no. Oh. I've got news I, I can't talk about yet. Which I know. Is annoying. It's crazy. It's so it's crazy. annoying. It's so annoying. It is. Um, so, damn, I wish I'd not thought about that. Sound like I just want to tell the world and I'm not allowed to. Yeah. I'm under embargo. Media blackout. Maybe. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. That's cool. Exciting things to come. Oh, this was what I was going to say. Have you ever had any exciting trade me purchases or experiences with trade me dealing with people? I, I had a sale selling. Oh, se experience. selling or buying, okay, yeah. either or. So I sold, a, I sold a motor scooter. It was the dumbest thing I ever did, is buy this motor scooter. I bought it brand new, yep, and sounds... I had to run it in. And I'm not a... I'm not a. When you say a motor scooter, do you mean like a nifty 50 sort of? Yeah, nifty 50, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, motor scooter. So I'm not a small guy, really, I guess. So I bought this thing. I had to run it in, and it couldn't go over 30Ks for the first... 500. Is this while you're in Hamilton or yes. Wellington? Hamilton. Yeah, here. Yeah, okay. Not so long ago. Yeah. Well, five years ago. Maybe. Okay, so you've got to run in this little scooter. I've got to run and it. And it can't in, go yeah. faster than 30. 30 for the okay. first 500 kilometers or something. Oh, well, and then what can it do after that, supposedly? And then it's running and it can work normally. You know how new motors work and you've got the running period? Yeah, vaguely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Vaguely. So all that sort of thing. Okay. Dumbest thing I've ever done. Anyway, uh, it was so gutless that I couldn't leave here and go up that hill. <laughs> Right, actually, you that hill, that hill. Can you go up the? It, there's two hills. Yeah. Next to Chris. Can you go up either or? I couldn't go up either. I would have to Whoa. take it out Cobham driveway and around, so it gave a bit of a lead up and get it warmed up and going, so that I could go anywhere. Right. So that was bad enough. I did take it out to Narrowahia to run it in. Oh, um, at 35 kilometres an hour in the back roads. Yes. What it color? What color is the scooter? I'm trying it was, to it was in my bright head. blue and it had a big. Um, thing on the back where you can put your helmet in or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, I had it for a while and I didn't use it because it was just stupid. Yeah. Anyway. Did you, actually, so, did you break it in in the end? Yeah, I, I think I got it past that 500k yeah, okay. cool. thing or whatever. But I wasn't really using it. So I ended up selling it on Trade Me. And this woman bought it and I said, look, it's, you know, she goes, what's the fastest you've been on it? And I said like 55, you should, you which was. You like, should have made it up. 120. No, I said 55. Because that was true. 
because I'd run it in by then. And um, I think it was a little bit of downhill involved, but, you know, it was 55. That's the first I've been on. And um, so that's cool. She, she bought it, and then she just went nuts about it. She started emailing me. She's going to take me to the fair trading. Why? Um, Did it not meet its... Yeah, she goes, you said it was a four-stroke, and it's only a two-stroke. And oh. I'm like, honestly, I don't know how many strokes it has, so I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have told you anything because I really don't have a clue. But you must... The two-stroke, four-stroke thing. Honestly, I don't know. I'm not mechanical. No, no. But if it was two-stroke, you have to put the oil with the petrol. Yeah. Like a lawnmower. And if you just put straight petrol in it, then it's not really going to go or it would blow up. So I had an operating manual. I yeah, followed yeah, the yeah. instructions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave her the operating manual. Oh, I good. don't know. But she said, oh, no, it's this and it's not this. Yeah. I said, what to say in the manual? She goes, oh, it says what you said, what you wrote in the trade me ad. Um, but that's not what it actually is. I'm like, well, if that's the case, you'd better take that up with the people that sold it to me. Yeah. I'm going to do you with the Fair Trading Act. No, you can't because I'm not a licensed reseller of no, vehicles. No. I'm not commercial. This is a Although private... that's all changed a bit now, isn't it? Well, no, if there's a private... Um, contract between individuals, fair trading doesn't come into it. All oh, right. Yeah. So, so anyway, anyone anyone buying anything off trade me is not covered by the fair trading act. So in the end, uh, she yeah disappeared. Oh okay. Natalie was her name. Yeah. Oh, I hate that name. I had a crazy ex with that name. Yeah. 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 Um, I actually know some cool people with Natalie as a name. So no, I'm not gonna I don't know anything, anyone but... with a cool name like that. Yeah. Okay. Any cool people with a name? Any, like yeah, that. that's what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm all sorts of dehydrated in your freaking shed. The oven. The that oven. is the studio. But it's all good. Uh, the trade me story I've got is it happened a couple of years ago. Uh, my mum joined up to trade me and I had to show how it all worked. And I said, what you have to realize is people will buy anything. Just whatever. It doesn't matter. Just list something. And they had this really old exocycle. And I mean really old. So it was like a stationary bike. Really old. Real crappy looking. It had a dial for resistance down the middle and then it had this weird speedo thing that wasn't working and then a i don't know what the lever did there was a lever on it for some reason and it was just crap i don't even know why they had it it was just something my dad found he's good like that and it was sitting there i said put it on trade me put it on trade me and i said put it on for a dollar and she goes no one's going to buy this thing no one's going to buy this thing i said you do not understand how this all works you know this someone was going to buy that and a few people were asking questions about it She's oh my god, I've got a question, got a question. So that was pretty cool. And then um, these two people started bidding on it. Like the old bidding war fired up. And I think it only got to $15. It was only 15 or $16. And these people won it. And uh, this is in Rotorua. And they said, uh, we'll come up from Taupo. We'll pick this up. We're going to come pick up this, this exercycle. And it was like, oh, okay. And um, we're home one day and uh, I was there. And this huge whatever the biggest Ford Transit van you can imagine turns up. Like, I was yeah. like, what's going on here? It's huge. And it was all done up. It was a motorcycle shop van, and it yeah. was all done up. And the lady was trying to get out of the van, but she was trying to keep someone in the van. Like, she was like, stay put, just stay put, oh, stay put. And it was all sorts of strange, because didn't know what was going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she got out, and she said, um, hey, um, I just want to say thank you so much for actually putting this up for sale. Um my daughter, my daughter's handicapped or has some, yeah, handicapped. And, um, what happened was, um, she had one of these bikes and that's what she used for, for, for physical therapy. And she used it every day, nonstop. And we made the really dumb decision of getting rid of that bike. And we brought one of the latest top of the line ones, ones yeah. and she won't use it. And she said, we've been looking for a bike identical to the one we had for the last year. And this is it. And she said, don't worry if it doesn't work, what it looks like, whatever. The guys at the bike shop are going to strip it down, repaint it, and do everything. And the daughter came out of the van, and she came up, and she's like, hey. And, um, yeah, really touching story. And then they were giving my mum hugs. And then my mum's like, hang on, hang on. And she ran inside and grabbed a whole bunch of freshly made muffins that she'd made and gave it to these people. And, yeah, it was great. Yeah, and so she's done a lot of more on trade me. Not then. really. Oh, really? Really? Well, just no. Nah, she just hasn't got round to it. Just the time thing. But it's such a because my dad is is like that. He's one of those guys. When I was a kid, we used to fill up the the trailer with crap to take to the tip. We'd go to the tip. We'd empty the trailer. We'd fill up the trailer at yep, the tip, yeah. and then we'd bring it yep. back. But then he'd be like, he'd fix washing machines, he'd fix lawn mowers, he'd put them all back together, and then he'd sell them. You yeah, know, on the in the classifieds. And we used to do the the um, garage sale thing. Go around oh, yeah, all yeah, the garage yeah, yeah. sales and buy all this junk. 
So he makes a bunch of money on, on yeah, yeah. trade me now. So he came around. See the um, cowboy hat with a tomahawk stuck yeah. in it? He's in here and he's looking around. He's going, well, you could sell that on trade me. You know, and I'm yeah. like, I made that for a fancy dress. I sort of quite like it. He goes, no, but you should just sell it on trade me. You'd make money for that. <laughs> yeah. you'd, you'd get five, ten bucks for that. Easy, easy. And, <laughs> and he bought some – he's – Keep, he used to keep bringing me out and telling me what he bought and stuff. And he bought some box of sandpaper. Yeah. And, um, you know, <laughs> oh, I paid five bucks for this box of sandpaper. I've been selling it at $2 a sheet. There's 500 sheets in there. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. A lot of it. But he sold it, all the sheets. Over a lot time. of it just comes down to time. Yeah. Like if you've got the time to do it and the patience to fix something and, you know, yeah, you're He only got the works skills. like three days a week and yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah. He loves it. But, yeah. um, yeah, and he goes. I had the same thing with a lawnmower. Actually, I sold this really crappy lawnmower and trade me. And these guys come and picked it up from my work, and they're like, "Yep, that's pretty good." And uh, actually, a guy at work was doing the same thing. They just buy lawnmower bodies and they have and engines, and they've got like a million parts, and they rebuild a whole lawnmower out of all these parts and then resell it. Bit of an industry See, going and on. There. I'm and I'm so useless because I just can't deal with it. Yeah. Um. That I've got a motorbike here. Uh, 600 ZXR. If anyone's after one. <laughs> 1996 Kawasaki, which is a perfect running order. I haven't done the last warrant and the ridge is actually out, but I'll get that sorted if I can sell it. Um, and I'm like starting to cut the price. I'm like, uh, just somebody else sell it for me. Yeah. I'll just take, take 18, it. I'll take 1800 bucks. Like it's a 600cc bike. I've got up to 160 miles an hour on it. Um, <laughs> good to know. Uh, once, you know, just to see if I could. So, yeah. But yeah, it, it goes well. Very good. All right, so um, how are we doing? That's pretty much us. So we've got our competition. Don't forget the competition. Yep. So to do the Mention competition. Mention your Kickstart project that yeah, you found. Give us something we can talk about in terms of Kickstart, whether it's a good one, a bad one, an interesting one, a weird one, whatever. Well, maybe it's your own Kickstart project. Yeah, well, if it is, that'd be cool. We can always give that a bit, maybe a bit of a plug or we'll rip it apart. <laughs> yeah, because we yeah. are experts in doing this. Well, actually, I sort of am. Someone I'm is. writing a book on it. Come on, come on. <laughs> We've got a published date for our book, for the crowdfunding book, just out of interest. Uh, yeah. Should I publish it, make this public? No. Yes, I should, because that will keep me to it, eh? Yeah, definitely. And then, and then, and then, definitely, because and then, can... then Kat will listen to this podcast and go, I can't believe you told people yeah. that on the 20th yeah. of November, this book will be live and published. Yeah. No pressure. No. I'm sure you guys can do it. I've got a lot of writing to do. But it's cool. You'll it's, be fine. Very, very cool. Um, okay, so... Um, even if you're not in the competition, feel free to leave us a comment. Tell us what you want to hear about. Tell us what we're doing right. Tell us what we're doing wrong. Do we need more? No one needs more of that. Uh, in the show. <laughs> Check out the Facebook page. Like it. Share it. Um, and you can keep up with what we're, what's going on. And we post a few random photos up there every now and then. And we do realize that you have a choice of what you listen to. And the fact that you're listening all the way through to this point. <laughs> yeah. Amazes the hell out of me. I mean, yeah. you know, we're very, very grateful. Yeah, thanks, thanks heaps for that. <laughs> yeah. And if you want to be on the show and you're in Hamilton, let us know. Yeah. Because we've got uh, we've got an extra mic here. So yeah. So we, we we're quite keen to have a, uh, some guests. Oh, and we have got a a what do you call those mashup mashup when you got mash-up two, two two series of of yeah. things and they collide. Sounds good. You know, they had the green arrow and flash, and they called yeah, it yeah. a crossover. A crossover. 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 That's a word. We have a crossover episode coming up with us and the Podfellas podcast. Yeah, Podfellas want to have yeah. another yarn with us. So we're going to, I think we're going to be talking about cereal, which we covered earlier, and they hadn't heard of. And so now they've, they've all, listened to it. Now they want all, to talk about it. Yeah, they've got it all caught up, you know, the young fellas catching up with the old guys. That's, that's great. Old guy. <laughs> I just want to state that. <laughs> oh, guys. That's you. Oh, yeah, yeah. But but with your beard and stuff, you look older than me. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. So, have a great week, and we will see you on the next time. Yeah. Okay. See you. Bye.